aspiring engineers. This episode got Fire Duck Pro. Now you may wonder what's going on with this video. This is a competitive gameplay Highlander style 9v9. All information in this video is highly relevant. Number one thing you should have knowledge of is your map. Know where your ammo packs and health packs are. They can save you time, save your life, save your team. Now what you see is I keep going and taking this midpoint metal pack. That metal pack, highly used by spies. Take it. Deny their cloak. Deny enemies refilling their ammo with it. The reason for the dispenser here, so my teammates have that an extra ammo while I have a way to build. Perfect, safe, keeps everything else away from you. Awesome thing. Having a level 1 teleporter can be very powerful for your team on a Koth map. Having a level 2 makes it a lot better, especially if you're recovering from a white. Level 3 though, it's a luxury. Don't waste your metal away on level 3 unless you know your team's holding everything perfectly fine. A teleporter though, however, will still be targeted by spies and scouts and soldiers because they're to get behind you and on your flanks. So having this teleporter around can help you get your heavy back to the front ASAP. A scout should never have to take it on a cough map. Too small for it for them. Your priorities should always be getting your heavier, more powerful pushing classes out. However, you do have a priority to maintain the front as well with your sentries and your dispenser. Never fear about taking your time to walk to the front while your better players get up front. One thing you should never forget, you have a gun. Lend a hand in defending and capturing points. It can help your team out greatly. You may not be the strongest class, you may not be the fastest class, but you have weapons and you have a responsibility to help your team. Helping your team out in any firefight, whether it be a soldier bombing in on your medic, capturing the point, defending the point, spy checking, all of that is vital. And that's why you have a gun. If you didn't have a gun, your only weapon would be a wrench. And we all know that would be pretty lame. Never let people on the flanks. An engineer, scout, soldier, spy, they get on your flanks, they can really mess up the team. When you leave spawn during your rollout, drop a tele entrance. You don't want to have to run back. I don't want to run back. I'm pretty sure you wouldn't want to run back. Running back to set an entrance is not extremely viable. It wastes your time when you could be out on the front helping your teammates. The only other way that would be viable for it would be dying. And that could take forever or it could take a few seconds. But never go out and a have your goal to be to die. If that was your goal, it wouldn't be very good. So always remember, drop that tele entrance. You'll save a lot of time, especially on Koth. Next thing you should know as an engineer, your sentry placement is key to your skill. 
As you saw, I placed that sentry up on a cliff ledge. It had barely any sights. Didn't really help the team. This sentry here is meant to give us a bit of cover before we make our push. And if you're ever using the gunslinger, never pick up your gun. Never do it. You waste more times. Now, putting your minis forward towards the enemy side can deter their weaker classes from using side routes, can deter them from the area. Medics, scouts, engineers, it can really make them back up, stop what they're doing to focus that mini, to get it down so they can go through, which leads to opportunities for your spy to come in and backstab the enemy while they're trying to do that, or even have your scout finish them off after they've been weakened. As you can notice, I've been trying to set up that dispenser. You always should have a fallback dispenser on a Koth map. You can use it for the metal, your teammates can use it for the health and ammo. It's a great resource to stay on those front lines. And without those front lines, you're not going to control the point. And without the point, you're not controlling much. Get a dispenser up as soon as you possibly can. The closer you have it to that front line, the higher the level you want. Putting it up behind that rock, I want my dispenser to be level 3. It can withstand more impact, and it can heal more. Never, never under circumstances stand in your mini century. Without you around your mini, it's going to confuse them, they're not going to know where you are, and they're going to help destroy more and more. That mini caused the death of a medic. The one I placed on their side. It killed a medic. I killed the demo man with my shotgun who was weakened by that mini. It worked out great. I wasn't standing near it. They didn't know where it was. It got them. By the time they had destroyed it, it was too late for them. They lost their medic. They had a weakened demo man. They ended up losing their demo man to my shotgun. He got a big old lead hug. You really, really should never, even in public games, the mini sentry is a partner. It's a portable partner and a portable cover getaway. It is also a great distraction. But you also want to place it in areas where it covers a greater distance. The more it can cover, the better it's going to do. The more your teammate can rely on you to cover it, the better too. We just pushed the enemy back here. I'm getting my dispenser leveled up to give my team a fallback. Our medic went down. Team's gonna rely on this dispenser to hold that front. Medic got back to the front using the teleporter. We're set. We're gonna hold this point. We're not gonna let it go that easily. Never should let it go. Now that engineer had wrangled his sentry as well. It went down pretty easy. A wrangled mini has 300 HP, three times the amount of a normal mini sentry being 100. However, him wrangling leaves some opening to more attacks, and wrangling a mini isn't going to do much for you. However, carrying a pistol around will definitely do some work. That extra damage output will really help you out. Again, drop that teleport entrance. It'll save you from coming back and wasting time. If you're wasting time, you're not doing engineer right. Get the mini up. Spy check teammates. Even if you don't think they're a spy, it could be. Watch. We had a spy called out here, so he was called out on cliff. 
I keep an eye out above me when going under, teammates keep an eye on me when I'm coming back, everything's good. We found the spy, our medic's trying to get to some cover, and a crit creek was called out. When you hear the word retreat, run. If you get caught in the explosion, it happens. Demo men are meant to take you out with those crit creeks. And never, never forget that a little bit of overheal to all your teammates can definitely go a long way. But never let your medic go unattended. Get your sentries forward. At this point, the soldier was getting a little miffed that the sentries were going up. And I wouldn't underestimate him. Now here's where that pistol comes in. We both empty our shotgun clips out. Outright. i like, okay, by the time he reloads, he's gonna kill me. Flip out my pistol. Pistol does the job. He had his Wrangler. He didn't have his Mini with him either. He couldn't be saved by his Mini. So overall, in that gunfight, I had overall advantage. That pistol is a key. It's not perfect in all situations, but neither is the Wrangler. You need to learn to balance them and use them at the right places, right times. Now, a key component to being an engineer is you're going to know where your buildings are set up. Every, all four of them. You'll know where they're set up. When a spy saps them, call it. Because you know where it is, your team will obviously know where the dispenser and the sentry gun is. Teleporter not so much, but it'll give you a clue of where that spy is and where it'll come from. Teammates will usually respond to that and be alert. Now, when Chris Creek gets called, Leave the buildings. Level 1 buildings, you can always rebuild. A dispenser can be rebuilt. A sentry can be rebuilt. An engineer can't be. An engineer's got a way to respawn timer. The longer that engineer has to respawn, the longer that building takes to get back up. Try and not get yourself killed. For me, I was caught out of position. I couldn't really do much of anything else. It happens. Getting caught out will get you killed, but it can be a good reward. Overall though, try not to be caught out as engineer. You are bottom of the food chain, just slightly above medic when it comes to combat. Your weapons may be good, your aim can be great, still be out damaged. So just be wary that you are still a target. Here I go once again. I never move my mini. Unless you're just adjusting an angle very quickly, never move your mini over a distance. Destroy it, rebuild. 100 metal, easy to get. That map knowledge gives me my metal. That engineer learned his lesson. He brought a pistol with him. He learned that that Wrangler wasn't doing much for him or his team. And overall, he made a smart choice switching to that pistol. Set up a forward sentry. Let's cut them off. These guys get distracted. They lose. And we've got our cover on the cement, and the concrete to the right. We have a while to hold. We'll surely need that HP and ammo from the dispenser. Medic goes down, we're gonna need it. We're holding against five seconds left on the clock. We got one minute to go. We need everything we can have up at this time. Our heavy goes down. 
my mini's still holding aside and it covers my extra cheek. Mini goes down. Put a mini on the point. It gets good angle around and ends up getting so the soldier killed. Keep that metal gone. Once again, build up that dispenser to level 3. Fully upgraded dispenser. Let's get an exit out just in case. I know it's not going to be set up exactly on time as I want it to, but it's still possible. Skip destroys the dispenser. We've got 8 seconds left. No time to rebuild. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe for more Engineer.